Everett, Washington, 25 miles north of Seattle. This blue collar town is home to the Prohibition Grill, a southern restaurant opened in 2008 by professional belly dancer, Rishi Brown. How are my lips? <laughs> They're fine. I had no restaurant experience at all, but I felt like if I could run a successful dance company all of these years, surely I could operate a restaurant business. Can I get anything for you, Molly? No. You good? Yeah. Okay. Because I have no experience. I don't run my kitchen at all. Two tops, medium, medium, and rare. I hired someone who's had 30 years of restaurant experience. Good job, Rock. Not my first trip to the rodeo. <laughs> He's amazing at his job. He's a little bit lazy. Be right back, gentlemen. He likes to smoke. He likes to talk on his phone. Hello. You know, if I have an order, I have to text him that there's an order. How's it tasting over here? It's, it's really bland. bland. We have customers that complain all the time. It's mushy. Is it? OK. I've had dishes where I've smelled it, and I was just like, you've got to be kidding me. Rocky, the ribs were disgusting. If we could fix it, we would. But Rocky keeps Rishi in the dark a little bit. What, what was the problem with the trout? There's no problem with the trout. All right. Oh, my god. Rishi is a little bit naive. She just sort of trusts Rocky. He has all the skills and all the knowledge. Yum. I don't know anything about what goes on back there. For Rishi to step in from belly dancing into running a restaurant, I don't want to use the word clueless, but she was, because she had no idea. <laughs> There's just some things that she does that I don't think a restaurant owner should do. <laughs> For instance, belly dancing. <laughs> it doesn't go with the theme of our restaurant. It makes no sense. Customers think it's weird. You know, I've been in the business 20 years. I know how a business is supposed to be run, and this is not the way. We got to get more people in here. <laughs> Unbelievable. If Prohibition Grill fails, I lose everything. I'm really discouraged. I really need help, because I'm at a complete loss to understand what's happened. And I'm not stupid, but I really don't know what's going on. Wow. Here he comes. Whoa. Wow, look at that. It's like something you get given in Vegas. You've learned to belly dance. What the hell has that got to do with the restaurants? Hi, welcome. Hello. I'm Rishi. Rishi, nice to yeah, see you. Yeah, thank you. Uh, wait a second. Yeah, that one's me. <laughs> <laughs> You're kidding me. Uh, am I coming for lunch, or are we having a, 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 a belly dance? Do the owners know this goes on? Yeah, absolutely. I am the owner. Oh, you are the owner? Yes. How long have you been doing this? this 30 is... years. And then you bought a restaurant? Yes. And you still belly dance? Yes. It's really wow. fun, yeah. Wow. It's about undulating and shimmying. Right. Rolling the body in motion with vibration. Oh, that's annulating. That's, that's just like annulating. rolling your tummy. That's right. Wow. Yes. Okay. Uh, whew, geez. <laughs> um, so, how do you go from belly dancing to becoming a Russian tour? Well, I decided over a cocktail one afternoon. Right. Okay. <laughs> uh, were well. you inebriated at the time? Did it sort of make your <laughs> mind a little lightheaded? Yeah, I remember it well. <laughs> But uh, then once it happened, the idea came in. There it was, it stayed. But had you ever worked in a restaurant before? Or? Um, I worked as a server for about six months one time when I was in college. Wow, right. Yeah. <laughs> um, and style of food, what is that? Uh, we do a gourmet southern menu here. Gourmet. Uh -huh. wow. Fine wow. dining. We kind of have a steakhouse theme here going on, dinner house theme. Dinner house, steakhouse. Yeah. Fine dining. Yes, with a southern. little southern flair to it. Wow. Um, OK. In your mind, what's the biggest problem? In my mind, um, well, we don't have a grill here. So before, we don't have a grill here. It's called Prohibition Hence Grill. Prohibition Grill, right? Wow. A Prohibition Grill with no grill. <laughs> wow. Yeah. OK. Let me take a seat. Sure. I have a special seat right back here for you. OK, great. Uh, nice boots, by the way. Oh, thank you.
I really believe in what we've done here, and I'm sure that Chef Ramsay is going to love the food today. Um, have you just been to a party, or...? No, I no. just got all dressed up just for you today. Oh, so you just you, you don't dress like that normally? No, I do dress like this normally. Oh, you do dress like yeah. that normally? Yeah. Wow. Uh, so I'm not special. Anyway, never mind. Um, Actually, I'm, you I'm, are, yeah, right. because this is a special occasion for sure. I got a little more dolled up, but right. this is my normal wow. get up. OK, great. Um, it's a big menu, huh? Yeah. Wow, Prohibition Grill, Southern Cuisine. Yes. Chef Rocky strives for originality and diversity, focusing on the quality of freshness. And without a grill, that's quite a statement. Oh, <laughs> it's so true. Well, OK. Um, How do you rate the food? Uh, what do you give your food out of 10? I give our food a 10. A I 10. think it's, yeah, I think it's amazing. I love everything on the menu. OK, great. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too, Chef Ramsay. Thanks for coming and enjoy your lunch today, okay? Thank you. What a uh, bizarre dress sense from the owner. I mean, she looks like she's in a fancy dress Britney Spears concert party. Hello. Hello. I am Candace. Oh, I'm Elaine. How are you? Yeah, well. Very you? nice to meet you. Oh, it's good to see you too. So, did Rishi get a chance to go over the menu at all with you? Um, she did briefly. Um, let's order, shall we? Okay. Um, What's the soup of the day? The soup of the day is jalapeno corn chowder. Mm -hmm. What was it yesterday? Jalapeno corn chowder. Oh, so it's soup every two days. And last week? Uh, so soup of the week. It's soup of the week. Uh, let's yeah. have a soup of the week. <laughs> yes. OK, um, let's go for the filet. How would you like that prepared? Um, medium rare, please. Medium rare. <laughs> let's go for the collard greens as well, the sides. The balsamic brown sugar glazed salmon. And do you know what? Throw me in a portion of the pan fried oysters. OK, we'll get that started for you. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so here's my list. So we're gonna do the oysters. So why don't I start with a cup of soup? Okay, dokey. Yeah. Okay. I was just seeing what you ordered. I thought those were really great choices. Our right. oysters are wonderful here, and my chef always makes the best soups. Can I just let you into a little secret? Sure. Not in front of your customers. Can I whisper? Sure. <laughs> Soup of the day is not soup of the day. It's the same soup that was on two weeks ago. What's happening? Soup of the day means a daily changing soup. Oh. I didn't even know what the soup of the day meant. I thought that just meant what soup we were serving that day. Wow. Yeah, wow. that was lame. Soup of the day. A new soup every day. OK, I'm going to talk to him about that. Wow. <laughs> so I didn't realize that soup of the day meant a fresh soup every day. Yeah. I thought soup of the day meant what is our soup for the day. <laughs> oh, my god. I'm not that stupid. It's just that's what I understood that meant. Candace, please. Chef Ramsay, here is our soup. Thank you. Thank you, my darling. OK. Wow. Soup of the week. Mm. That's just slop. Horrible, nasty loop with some sort of dusting around the outside of the plate. Did you have a chance to taste the soup? Yeah, I had a chance. Yeah. OK, and? Small, uh, yeah, just uh, not nice. Gnarly. Should I just get that out of here? Uh, yes, please. OK. Uh, when was the last time you tasted it? Um, I haven't tasted it. You didn't have this soup? I haven't had this soup. Wow. Rocky, we've had the same soup for seven days. Made it Saturday. But we wrapped it and stored it properly. OK, I'm going to tell you what. The oysters are going to be fresh and delicious, made right now for you. You mean opened? You don't make an oyster, you just open them. Huh? Oysters are opened. Oh, got it. No, he's not opening them daily. Oh, so he's opening the oysters and... No, he's buying them pre-opened. And were they bought? I think they came in today. Will you just check? Yes. Thank you. Rocky? Yes? When were the oysters delivered? They were delivered here Friday. 
They were delivered Friday. Right. Yes. So the fresh oysters aren't exactly fresh, but they're from five days ago. Five days ago. But we don't get them here frozen. Yeah, that's, that's, that's good to know. Frozen oysters right. in Seattle. That would be bad. Right. So far, nothing is quite as it seems. OK. So these are the oysters. OK, great. Hand-fried oysters. Thank you. You're welcome. Normally, an oyster should taste of something salty, creamy, delicious. These are just tasteless. So he's managed to take a delicious tasting oyster and turn it into something that's cake and cornmeal and tastes of nothing. How are the oysters? Yeah, they're bland. They just taste of nothing. I mean, I just have a little, just have a little, just a small touch. I don't eat our oysters. Oh, you here. don't. Oh, oh, you don't eat them. I don't eat oh, them wow. here. They're not fresh, so. No. I only like fresh oysters. Me too. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Yeah, I'm not gonna try those oysters. I think that they're gross. I know better. I'm not trying them. Um, he absolutely hated these. He thought they were gross. They're way too much cornmeal, bland. Had absolutely no flavor. Hmm. That's interesting. That makes no fucking sense. Jeff Ramsey is in the middle of sampling Prohibition's menu. They're bland. They just taste of nothing. OK. And he's already discovered a lack of freshness, a lack of flavor, and a real lack of basic restaurant knowledge by the owner. I wouldn't try the oysters because they're not fresh. Well, I thought fresh means that it's not frozen. Usually it means, like, fresh from the day, shell. Fresh from the shell. Right. Fresh, fresh from the, you know, all that sort of thing. So I'm like, like soup of the stuff. day. Yeah. OK. Wow. Let's try this. OK, this is a this filet is mignon. filet mignon. This is the collard greens. Collard greens. And it's wrapped in bacon, right? Wrapped in bacon, yes. Thank you, madame. You're welcome. Mm. I mean, it's dreadful. Absolutely dreadful. It's got a horrible taint to it. Well, how did we do on this? Yeah, this is yeah, not very good. Horrible grayness to it. I don't know what he's done. It's almost like the meat's been boiled. And those there, collard greens with just mush. Wow. May I take it out of Please. your way? And thank you, mate. <sighs> 10 out of 10 so far. I'm zero out of 10, let me tell you. Uh, these are really mushy and tasteless, and... Oh, yeah. Rishi's like, oh, I'll be the judge of that. That's and... ridiculous. Those are... Incredibly wonderful. They are. They are a little mushy. They they're, knew, mushy. they're a little mushy. That is the only problem, but the flavor profile is perfection. And the flavor? He thinks that it's been boiled. Boiled? boiled? I think it's good. Do yeah. you like it? I know it's perfect. I know it is. So here we actually have the salmon. Bloody hell. Yeah. That's the salmon. <laughs> That's the salmon. <laughs> and why does the salmon go in a pinwheel? I don't, I don't know. Thank you. I mean, honestly, look at that plate. I mean, little balls of hush puppies, massive wedge of cornbread that looks like a door opener, and a pinwheel that fits perfectly, you know, on the side of my tomato. Wow. That is fucking disgusting. Pinwheel, yeah, I feel like doing a cartwheel out of here. Oh, fucking hell. Oh, he's banging his hands on his head. That's really bad. Is he allergic to salt? No. There's no seasoning on there whatsoever. Aged balsamic vinegar, macerated with brown sugar on salmon, needs to be backed up with salt. Shall I take no. it away? Please, yeah, okay. thank you. You're welcome. Holy crap. OK. He did not like this. He thinks that the balsamic, the reduction, needs to be backed up with salt. Hmm. He wants to know the idea between the pinwheel of the salmon. He doesn't understand it. I think it's <laughs> interesting. I like it. I think it's a, I think it's a cool presentation on the plate. I like it. OK. Way to stand up for your food, Reese. Way to stand up for your food. But I do. I like that. That's one of my favorite things on our menu, is that presentation of the salmon. What can you do? Oh, shit. Here he comes. Introduce me to the team. This is Jeff. Jeff. Hi. Dennis. Dennis. Yep. And this is Rocky. Right. 
I feel like I've just gone 12 rounds with you, let me tell you. Let me read you something. Prohibition Grill Southern Cuisine. Chef Rocky strives for quality and freshness. Correct. Freshness? The soup from last week that was called Soup of the Day. Gloopy, under-seasoned, it wasn't even hot. It was just hideous. Big fan of that soup. Big fan of the soup. What I've just eaten has been an embarrassment. Pan-fried oysters, just solid cornmeal with no seasoning. It needs some form of seasoning. I didn't know that. You don't even know what soup of the day is. Can I talk to you about the pinwheel of salmon? Can you go and get me a pinwheel? Yes. Hurry up, please. Chef Ramsey, I like the pinwheel. I'm not asking you like it. Oh. You give your food 10 out of 10, so right. me talking to you about food, it's like, yeah, I'm talking to a brick wall behind you. Right. I liked it. I thought it looked nice and kind of unique and different. Kind of unique and different? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And how many strips did you get out of a salmon? 14. Like, until I just looked at it, I didn't even think this was so small. Right. And even the bloodlines on there as well. Nasty. Chef to chef. Have you any idea how bad that makes you look? On decisions about how food is prepared, I believe in what they do back there. That's their thing, especially Rocky. Come on. Color greens, overcooked, tasteless mush. I thought they tasted great. They and were you know overcooked, what? though. You knew they were overcooked. Have right. you any idea how fucking deluded you sound? What? How can something be fucking delicious and overcooked? There's no such thing. Man, uh. are customers that stupid? Are you? No. Are you? No. Are you? No. And you are. Guess so. Why did you ask me here if your food's 10? Well, I was hoping that you could come here and help me get this business to the next level because I can't seem to do that on my own right now. How bad is your business currently? How much money per week are you losing? At least $2,000. So that's $8,000 a month. That's 100 grand a year. Does that not sink in anyone's fucking mind? I don't know what to say. I like the food. I think the food is great here. After only a short time in the restaurant, Chef Ramsay is shocked by how lazy Chef Rocky is and how clueless Rishi is. Can you get me some lipstick? Uh-huh. And before dinner service, there is one issue he wants to take care of right away. Prohibition grill. My ass. No more false advertising. He's putting tape over the grill. Excellent. I got a crab cake going out with a Caesar and a small salad. Where's Rishi, by the way? She's getting ready for belly dancing. Tonight? We're ready to go on the second check as well. Candace, you're up. Where was this? What? Cornbread. Huh? When was this cornbread made? That was made the other day, and we weren't even going to serve it. We just threw it back here. We're going to. We weren't even going to serve it. You just we, threw it. We, we oh, Dennis, 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 big deep breath. You just made it. Made it the, the other, other day. Yeah. Threw it back here because you weren't serving it. Because, yeah, it got, bur it got burnt, and Rocky told me just go throw it in the back room for right now. I just feel that. Oh, I know. It's terrible. I don't know. It's pretty bad. Music, 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 music. You are kidding me. Five, six, seven, and. Are you fucking serious? I'm not joking, you. Oh, my God. <laughs> Close the doors. Put me off my dinner. Fuck me. Oh, my God. She's just in her own world, and she thinks that everybody's loving it. And as you look around, you can tell that people are confused. <laughs> Some even mortified. Chef Ramsay locked himself in the freezer to get away from the belly dancing. <laughs> oh, my god. It is weird. <laughs> <laughs> 
yeah. Belly dance. That was a belly flop. Following the impromptu belly dance. Kitchen, please. So this is pretty much rare, and they wanted a medium steak. There's a steady stream of undercooked dishes coming back to the kitchen. Back in the oven, please. Oh, no. No, no, no. Colleen. This is supposed to be medium. Oh, God. Oh, no. Come on. God. What is this? Rocky, could you put these steaks on uh, just a tiny bit more? All right, guys, this is just in the last five minutes. I don't know what's going on, but, you know, can someone get a grip, please? Another medium refire. This is normal, all these complaints with temperatures on the meat. Mm -hmm. Especially on the steaks. Is that acceptable to you? No. People hate our food. So far, so good this evening. And she turns a blind ear, which frustrates us all, you know? Why does Rishi walk around like everything's just perfect and a big smile on her face? That's what she believes oh, no. it all is. What's wrong, darling? What's wrong? The ravioli's cold. Wow, wow, wow. Yeah, the kitchen needs help. Lots. Did everything tasting good? Yeah. <laughs> the gravy feels like I got the, the bottom of the pot. OK, thanks for your comments. Um, I just want to let you know at this table right here, they both think that the gravy tastes like it came out of the bottom of the pan. They're really unhappy about that. Should I just go ahead and take that Where's back she... to the kitchen then? Yeah, she... yeah. it's your restaurant. Which okay. table? Where would... This table right Let's here. Let's deal with it now. Come okay. on. Um, my apologies. And madam, if you're not happy with it, I'd rather you didn't eat it. The sauce tastes like liver. Can we fire a fresh chicken for the lady yeah. with no sauce? Sorry about that. We'll get that going for you. Can you taste the gravy? I'm going to taste Please. it, yeah. It tastes really gritty to me. Where is it? Now I see, Where right here. It? Jeff, can you pass me that gravy? Everyone's complaining now about I the gravy. I see why they think it tastes like liver, because it's really gritty. What was it made? Gravy was made last week and frozen. Last week and frozen. Uh. <laughs> oh my god. <coughs> it's sour. All of you. Get any plate of gravy off the tables off now. Off the tables now. Oh, my gosh. Look at that. Dry as anything. The meat's cooked and raw on the same shelf. Rocky, you got the ribs there. What's next to the ribs? Raw pork. Raw pork. Get Rishi, please. Rishi. Rule number one. Cross-contamination. Ex explain to Rishi. Never saw a cooked product next to a raw product. So just look at that. What is that there? Raw product. Raw pork. What's that there? Cooked ribs. Cooked ribs. And this here, what is this, guys? Oh, my god. It's trout. What is New that? New trout, old trout. Just feel how sticky that is on top. That's the old trout. And that there is the fresh one underneath, right? No, we pulled today. No, you pulled today. What is that? Bread pudding. Bread pudding. Bread what? Oh, my god. Rocky, come on. When was that cooked? Saturday. What day is it today? Tuesday. Tuesday. And what we didn't sell on Saturday, what do you think should happen? It's it. Oh, my gosh. Stop. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm sorry and I'm so disappointed, but whatever you're eating now, just stop. Stop. Dinner service at the Prohibition Grill has just gone from plain bad. What is that there? Raw product. What's that there? Cooked ribs. To downright dangerous. Ladies and gentlemen, whatever you're eating now, just stop. And Chef Ramsay has had enough. I am not going to stand here and watch this kitchen send you food that is A, cross-contaminated, B, reheated from frozen. It's an absolute embarrassment. Yeah, obviously not serving anything else. There won't be any more food coming to the table tonight. We're really sorry about this experience. We had a lot of really unsatisfied, unhappy guests tonight. And that hurts. Ridiculous. Let's go. I can't help you one minute longer. Do you know why? Why? Because you, madam, cannot help yourself. Lazy chef. OK, well, this is the deal. First of all, I've known about Rocky being lazy for a really long time. I've called him out on it a thousand times. And you know what I get? This is what you get for how much you pay me. I don't make enough. This is, you That's know. That's not entirely accurate. Well, what? it is accurate. Like, he and I go around once a year about this exact thing, because he doesn't make the money that he wants to make. I like him so much in so many ways and so many things that he does. 
but he's not held to the same standard that everybody else is held to here by me because what am I going to do? I don't know how to come in here. I don't know how to fucking train anybody else. I so, don't know how to butch the meats. So, I don't know how so to do anything. So you fear losing a chef? Yes. That doesn't yes. care? Yes. That's ruining your business. There's some things Rocky is doing good. And every single time... What do I do a word with you? Because I, I, I can't fucking sit here and take this shit any longer. Ugh. I am not going to listen to excuses. You keep on telling me that he's good and he's... Well, because he's been here with me all these four years, and, and my feeling is is that he has the, the skills to do it. Why are you convinced? that he has the skills to do it. Because I don't know about that job, and he's been here since day one, and he has led me to believe. He has he's led me to believe. He has, he has, and intuitively, I've known it. You allowed him to take you hostage. I have. So you deserve what you get then, because you're not prepared to step up. No, I stepped up, I fired him two months ago. He was gone for a week in the kitchen. They didn't know how to do the order. They just didn't know. And then I brought him back again. I actually feel sorry for you. Do you know why? You're being used. Step up. Yeah. Get a grip. Yeah. Because time right now is not your friend. I'm done for tonight. Yeah. Chef Ramsay thinks he's unbelievably lazy, has got me over a barrel, and the fact that I allow him to be the kind of chef that he is here is unacceptable. Well, and he's gotten away with it for so long. Like, how, how is he going to change his behavior after this long? After shutting down the restaurant, Hello. Hi, ladies. Let's have a little seat over here. Chef Ramsay is completely bewildered. He's looking for some explanation, and he begins the day with Rishi and her staff. Let's be honest, last night was a disaster. Everyone agreed? Yeah, yes. absolutely. And customers were absolutely at their wit's end. I mean, there was one table in the front there that had the dish refired three times. When was the last time that happened? I'd say it happens all the time. Yeah. Yeah. Honestly, can this? Absolutely. What is the response from the chef? He usually takes it really personal mm -hmm. and thinks that they're wrong and the, He's food, right. and the food tastes just fine. What does that tell you? It's Rocky. He and I started here at the same time, yeah. and he was very Sorry. passionate. Uh, in the last two years, no. 30%, maybe. Wow. Uh, last time I worked, got 15 orders. He goes outside behind the building. 15 orders, and your head chef is outside. Smoking. smoking. And I just don't feel like going outside to get him, so I text him. Do you think it's right that he should be outside and you have to text him to come in? Oh, God, no. No. And we have to supplement Rocky's income How by tipping. On average a week, we tip about 3%, 3 of, of the food, food sales. sales. The head chef getting tips? He told me that that's what other people do in other restaurants, and that's fair. They put the food out to give the server the opportunity to what? earn the tip, so they should told deserve we, that. We've told her, though, that's not how it is in the industry. No, it's not. He's made me feel this way over time, that I owe him. Why do you owe him? Because I'm afraid that I can't make this happen without him, because... So you because think I not... just I feel like I don't have the experience to know what to do so, if I don't have someone who... So you think he's not replaceable? Right. So how many people feel that this restaurant would be better off without Rocky? Sorry. Why do you support Rocky the way you're doing? I'm just scared to take that chance. Rishi, this is crazy. I know. I don't know why I'm like that. I'm not like that in any other places this in my life. This is crazy, my darling. You should not be put in this awful, vulnerable situation and be beholden to a chef that's tearing you apart. Rishi is completely afraid of change. She doesn't like to change her hair. She doesn't like to change her house. She doesn't like to change anything. Do you mind if I just talk to Rishi alone, please?
I'm just scared because I, because <laughs> when I when I did this, I really didn't know what I was getting myself into. And then last night when you just stood up and you told Rocky, just stop making excuses. This is wrong. You're lazy. I just have been so scared to do that. I appreciate your honesty. I can really feel, especially today, that you care. But when I first arrived, you were almost tiptoeing over the issues as opposed to tackling them head on. I know. But with Rocky, just even if he steps up right now, or to say what's going to happen, I can't even tell you. But why let the misery go on? I don't want to. I'm just so scared. <laughs> Help me. I'm here. I'm here. Okay? I'm sorry. I'm so upset. Come on. I'm here. I'm going to get this thing sorted. Okay. I was too scared to make that decision with Rocky to not have any anyone there that could say, okay, well, let's do this. Okay, <laughs> no, I need to find someone else. But I'm just afraid that there's not going to be somebody else's that, because he has me believing that, like, I, know. I don't pay enough to have, I really Listen do. to me and listen very carefully. <laughs> I will do all I can to find you a chef. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> this is your decision, your business, your future, and your money. You need to take responsibility. I can't do that for you, OK? I You're know it has to be done. Why would I want to go forward with someone who's sabotaging my business? Don't worry, OK? Thank you so much. I'll see you shortly. I'm getting on the phone. Okay. Stand strong, okay. OK? It's the right thing to do to let Rocky go. After a heart-to-heart -heart with Chef Ramsay, Rishi now finally understands what is the main problem of the restaurant. Oh, Rish. OK, so I'm going to fire Rocky today because Chef Ramsay's going to help me find someone. It became very clear to me that Rocky's not going to change. Even if he says he's going to step up and blah, 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 he's not going to change. That's the right thing to do. It's your business. It's your livelihood. It's, it's your life. So now what? Oh, fuck. Hello. Hi. Hi. <sighs> What's going on? Just said, oh, get up. Get going out the door. Okay, so um, I don't want to. I don't want to beat around the bush about it. Unfortunately, I'm letting you go. It just things haven't changed even after our last reconciliation. Things still haven't changed. I'm sorry. Yeah, I. Uh, I understand. You know, I've gotten complacent, and uh, I realize that, and. Uh, Sorry I had to come to this. I'm sorry. I'm so relieved to know that I don't have to feel like I'm held hostage anymore. I have the courage now to make the changes necessary. <sighs> How'd it go with Rocky? You know, it went really well. Good. Um, Rocky took responsibility for what happened. He didn't try to make me feel like it was my fault or... Right or anything. Good. I felt like a boss. I Good. felt empowered. I felt like Good. I'm making the right decision, and Good. I'm going to make it right now. Yeah. Let's get the rest of the staff. OK. Uh, you and I are going to have a little fun. Right, team, I want all of you just to go in the kitchen. <laughs> Let's go. OK, do you have any trousers or uh, jeans or? No. no? That's it. That's it. Wow. <laughs> you're, like a, you're like a naked chef. I know, right? <laughs> When was the last time you actually cooked a dish in here? Never. You've never cooked in here? Ever? 
Ever? No. Wow. You should never, ever be intimidated by the kitchen. Right. With Rocky, I never felt invited to come into my kitchen. I felt like that was his place, and my place was my job. Nothing to worry about whatsoever. To be really honest, please. I love to cook. Seriously? Yeah. Seriously. That is good to know. You know that. Yeah. Why didn't you tell me that yesterday? <laughs> <laughs> right, first on, slow-cooked duck salad. A little touch of olive oil. Just a touch. We've got some fresh herbs. Frise salad. Now, your turn. Take your spoon and just baste over the duck legs, please. Tilt the pan and baste. Nice. There we are. Does she look great in the kitchen, by the way? Yes, she does. Huh? <laughs> Good. There you go. How's that now? Way better. Good. Hold the bone. Sit that. Nice. Perfect. Yay! Yeah. Wow. Thank you. She just cooked those dishes there with me, like a boss, like an owner. That's what you've got to do when you've taken the responsibility of opening a restaurant. It's about having a presence. Right. I want you all to get a knife and fork. We're going to sit down and have a bite to eat. It's amazing how just being in the kitchen with Chef Ramsay, I felt really empowered. Now, not... this is a 10. <laughs> this is a 10. <laughs> I am not going to be afraid anymore. I love it. After a great deal of research, Chef Ramsay and his team worked through the night to transform the restaurant from a southern style grill into a gastropub. Hey, good morning. How are we? Good. Good. Now I have some very, very exciting changes to show you. Woo! Right, take off your blindfolds. Oh! Prohibition Grill is no longer a grill. Welcome to your new gastro pub. Ah! We've brought out the texture of those amazing bricks. The chevrons give it that modern feel. Look at the bar. We've brightened up the whole room with that beautiful red lacquered bar. I love it. I love it. I love it. It's a good time for a change. Yeah. I'm so excited right now here in Everett. Nobody has a building that looks like this. It's beautiful in here. I love it. Rishi, yesterday I made you a promise that I would find you a chef. <gasps> chef Ramsay. This chef oh, has cooked for over 20 years in the Northwest. Oh, God. I'm going to introduce <laughs> you to Tyler Pelagin. Chef! Ah! How are you, sir? Let me tell you something about this young man. He is opening up his very own cool, hip, amazing restaurant in downtown Seattle, Radiator. Yep. Now, until then, he's going to be here with you, Rishi. And after he's gone, he'll make sure there's a chef replacing him that is up to the standards of what both you and Chef requires. Excited? Yes! <laughs> Cheers. Now I feel like I have a real chance for real success. I'm so You're grateful welcome. to have you here. In keeping with the new gastropub theme. Oh, my god. <laughs> oh, wow. Yum. Chef Ramsay has designed a menu that can be easily executed in Rishi's small kitchen. Oh, my, oh my gosh. gosh. Oh, Chef Ramsay, I'm so excited. Good. I want you all to dig in, have a taste. Here you go, honey. Thank you. I'm going to start oh over my here. Gosh. Oh, my god. That was amazing. With the food and the decor now looked after, Chef Ramsay has one more makeover to reveal, and that is Rishi. Wow, you look amazing. Thanks. I love, I love it. it. How's my hair look? Obviously, it's about time. Rishi's attire, it was a little bit inappropriate. <laughs> With Chef Tyler now at the helm, new systems have been implemented. Yeah, and I'm right on top. Good. And that includes Rishi taking a lead role as expediter. When I fire entrees, I take and stick them here. Perfect. Fire left one, please. Left one heard. To spread the word about the new prohibition, Chef Ramsay invited influential bloggers. That bourbon glaze is fantastic. I'm absolutely amazed and so proud of Rishi for taking charge of her restaurant. Put your right hand up. <laughs> yes. I do solemnly swear. I do solemnly swear. That I will no longer be hosting belly dancers. I will no longer be hosting belly dancers. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> Good night, my darling. Okay, good Take night, care. Chef Ramsay. Thank you. Thank you. 
the knowledge that he's given me to empower me to be a real restaurant owner. I've never had that. <sighs> this has to be one of the most unusual kitchen nightmares ever. Rishi had no idea that her loyalty towards Rocky was actually ruining her business. Thankfully, she saw the light, stepped up, and made a very, very brave decision. More importantly, she now understands the key ingredients to running a successful dining room. Belly dancing is not one of them. Soul food, belly dancing in the Northwest. Wow. In the weeks that followed, the one and only gastropub in Everett, Washington is a hit. Onion soup, crab cakes. And for the first time since she opened. All right, and the salmon for you, my dear. Rishi truly feels she is in control of her very own restaurant. I'm so excited that Everett has a, a restaurant like this. I know. 